Good morning and greetings to us all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome again to everyone who are joining with us for our online devotion this Thursday morning, the 25th of November. Hoping you are all well and ready to go for what the Lord has in store for you today. Our verse this morning comes from the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18. Do not get drunk with wine which will only ruin you. Instead be filled with the Spirit. Our verse this morning comes from Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18. Do not get drunk with wine which will only ruin you. Instead be filled with the Spirit. Yuan awa neke amutolu kehe waina koi mena matavahala haia kaki apuke amutolu kehe anganga. Samon awa fo inei ona auto ile waina ole mea e ulu vale ai aia fa atumuina auto ile anganga. Cook Island. E aura kai kona i te waina, e tupue i te kanga maata, ki a kira koto i te vairua. Do not get drunk with wine, which will only ruin you. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. The Bible tells us in Genesis 1, 3, that the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. He was the agent in creation. Throughout the Old Testament, the Spirit came upon certain people to empower and enable them to do His work. A good example of this is Samson, in that he had supernatural power to give him strength like no other man. In the New Testament, we have Jesus who was anointed by the Spirit and under the control of the Holy Spirit. We also have the story of Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit came and filled the believers with his power and enabled them to be his witnesses and to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. But here in our verse today, Paul highlights an important aspect of the Christian life. When he writes this letter, to the church at Ephesus, the, the point of being filled with the Spirit. Our verse reads, Do not get drunk with wine, which will only ruin you. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. The first part of the verse deals with being influenced by too much uh, drinking wine. That's why it says, Do not be drunk with wine. When someone becomes intoxicated, they become under its influence. Their mind is not clear, their speech slurs, and even if they were to walk, they would most likely be swaying to and fro. This is the situation that Paul is bringing to light. Instead of that, being drunk with wine, Paul says, be filled with the Spirit. The sense here is continuous in that you need to be continually filled with the Spirit. It's not just a one-time filling. It's a daily filling continually, not just a one-time experience. So it's something you and I need to do every day. Now, if that is the case, then that means... Uh, you will be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit here refers to the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God, the same person. What is the point here? The point is we need Him in our life. We need the Spirit of God to give us strength and power daily. Did you know we're not able to live the Christian life without Him? That's why Jesus said, I will go 
but I will send the Holy Spirit to be your helper. He is given to help you, teach you, and guide you in all things. Yes, our, our verse reads, Do not be drunk with wine, which will only ruin you. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Remember Stephen, who was a man full of faith, full of wisdom, full of the Spirit of God. It mentions and it's mentioned in Acts chapter 6 and 7. Thing is, he spoke the truth, but when his hearers heard it, they did not like it because he was telling them exactly what they did to Jesus Christ. As a result of that, they got angry and they began to stone him. In fact, they stoned him to death. But as they were doing so, the Bible tells us he was looking up and he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God as if to welcome him into his presence. Yes, full of the Spirit, even in this case of Stephen. Whatever it is you may be facing or struggling with today, know that God is more willing to help and give you strength to overcome that or to help you any time. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time as we come before your presence this morning. Thank you for your word and for reminding us of the importance of being filled with your spirit daily and not with other things. We acknowledge your sovereignty here in New Zealand and throughout the whole world. We pray, O oh God, for a spirit of understanding, tolerance and patience as we work through this COVID-19 situation as a nation. We ask for your undertaking and enabling for all the preparation and processes that need to be set in order. We come against the spirit of disobedience and rebellion and we bind and rebuke it in Jesus' name. We commit our day into your hands, Lord God for your leading, for your protection and for your blessing upon us all. Those going to work, those going to school, for those at home, our elderly, widows, sick in hospital or at home, whatever the sickness or situation may be, Lord God, the helpless and those in need. Heavenly Father, grant to them all your peace, comfort and healing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah, please continue to obey the rules and guidelines of the alert levels that you're in. God bless you. Take care and be safe until we meet again tomorrow morning.